This next section describes how we learn things, which is really important for literacy. It's a series of steps and when people have poor literacy, it's normally because they get stuck between the steps. So it's a series of four steps and it's just like imagining walking up four steps and you get glued to the second step. Okay, these are the four steps. The first step is unconscious incompetence. If we take the example of when we of learning to drive, when we're born, we are definitely unconsciously incompetent. We have no idea that we are going to want to learn to drive one of these days. Completely ignorant of that's going to be a good idea. So eventually we come to the place where we take our first driving lesson and oh my goodness, can you remember that? And you will then realise how consciously incompetent you are. So you know, you get out of the car at the end of the first lesson and you think, I'm never going to do this because there's all these gears and there's these pedals and there's these indicators and there's these mirrors and all of this stuff needs to be looked after and it's just really difficult. By the time you get to taking your driving test, we hope you've become consciously competent, which means that you know the order in which you're doing things, you know when you pull out, the first thing to do is to look in the mirror and then you um, take the handbrake, you put the car into gear, you take the handbrake off, etc. Everything has a flow to it. So you're very conscious of all the steps you've got to take and you're be you become proficient at it. The fourth step is unconsciously competent. So if you can remember driving today or yesterday, you probably won't remember the journey very well. You certainly won't remember what you did with the pedals and all those sort of things. And it isn't unless something unusual happens on the road do you actually have any recognition of that. What we see happening is the same skill. If you want to learn to read, if you want to do maths, etc., etc., it's exactly the same process you go through for anything. Even if you want to learn to swim, it's exactly the same process. What happens and what we see happening is that people get stuck on step two. So they never progress to being consciously competent, like when you're taking your driving test. And the reason is they're learning differently. They're learning in a way that doesn't match how they're being taught. So they get confused, their teachers get confused, and their parents get confused. And then eventually we end up with labelling people with learning difficulties. And we're stuck in that loop in the middle of everything is really, really difficult. And you can't get out of the loop because you're learning in a different way. Now, I'd like to give you a really trivial example is that I never learnt to swim terribly well. And the reason was nobody ever managed to teach me a way to put my head under the water that didn't get me swallowing water. So you could say I've got a disability in swimming. But, and so I got stuck in confusion. And if you want to make up a learning difficulty for swimming, it's probably something like dysswimology or something. The, so, but if I'd been taught to put my head under the water in a way that actually worked for me, I could have carried on and done swimming. And even today, I could do it if I want to, but it's not something that's high on my priority list. So what we need to do is to hijack this process and catch the way they're learning differently and teach them in a way that they can learn and then they can go back into conscious competence. And that's all it is. And it applies to anything. Driving the car, swimming, literacy, numeracy, anything. When we're learning, we use a mixture of our senses. We use pictures, we use auditory, we use kinesthetic, what things feel like, olfactory, and gustry. So if we're going to make, um, make dinner, for example, we learn to cook by a mixture of what things are going to look like when they're on the plate, what things look like when they're in the saucepan or in the oven. You might have a bit of auditory, but not a lot, unless it's going to have, you're going to have an exploding meal. Um, you might have it a sizzling meal in the frying pan, perhaps. Um, kinesthetic is what it feels like to you, which might be what it physically feels like or what you get the scent, the emotion you get when you've made a nice meal. Olfactory is what, and gustatory is what it tastes and smells like. And so you've got all these senses and they all play a part. So what do you just think for a moment? What do you use when you're driving the car? 